Okie dokie. Well, here we are for another brush hour. And this is the second in this series of new shows that I'm doing, focusing on how to use, why to use, how to create, how to enjoy Photoshop fresco brushes, brushes made in the Adobe ecosystem in general. Um, there are just so many fun things to do with brushes. You know I'm brush obsessed. You know I'm brush crazy. You know I go to bed at night with a Wacom stylus and with an Apple Pencil. Um, it's just, you know, there's something wrong with me. I, I should probably go seek help. I should go and see somebody um, who has a long couch I can lie down on and just uh, and get things sorted out. Now, today we're going to talk about big brushes. Okay, now that sounds kind of simple and kind of almost like uh, something that isn't worth talking about, but you're wrong, folks. You're wrong because big brushes, first of all, there are many of them. Uh, second of all, there are just so many good things that they can do for your illustrations. Um, we're going to talk about one, how they can help you block stuff in. You can avoid getting hung up on detail when you are planning out an illustration, planning out a drawing, okay? And how you can see the big picture, see things from afar, work big to small, which is a good habit for everybody to get into. The second thing we're going to talk about is how they can create exciting backgrounds for you, okay? Need a little punch in your background? Throw in some big brush action there for a sky, uh, for some kind of a landscape situation, or some kind of a background in your comic, um, or whatever it happens to be. Big brushes, they got you covered. Okie dokie. And then we're going to talk about also adding some texture, some textural elements on top of an illustration using big brushes, covering a lot of territory. And since we're in fresco, I thought we'd also look at what we could do with using the watercolors in fresco because you can really size those puppies up and get some nice big beautiful washes um so that'll be included when we talk about the backgrounds and things like that as well as some special effects that you can do all right so that's a lot of things to try and cover in an hour let's see how far we get um the last episode if you were able to catch it we covered seven uh different things you could do with spatter and um there's a lot of good stuff you can do so go catch that episode it's still archived over there on youtube and if you're watching on youtube please go head over to behance.net where you can sign up it's a free account go to behance.net slash live and then i can see the chat i can say hi to you folks and i can answer your questions live while i'm doing the show because we always have some good questions and it's good for me to know what it is you want to know more about okay without further ado why don't we move on now to uh, our ipad here and i've got fresco called up and I was just fooling around right here actually with a big brush and I want to tell you all about that. Um, this is uh, with regards to backgrounds. Uh, this is actually from one of the updates. This is in the summer 2020 uh, brush update. All of you who have a Photoshop or Fresco subscription, you get these brushes about every quarter. I release a nice new set of brushes for you. And I think there are a good 25, 30 brushes in here, maybe even more. And they're all extra special. They do something fun. This is the Water Lilies brush. And of course, it was inspired by our good friend Claude Monet. Monet? I'm just kidding. Monet. Um, Monsieur Claude Monet, qui est français, bien sûr. Uh, really excellent impressionist. So I thought, why not create brushes? that I love to do the impressionism with. And so, bum, 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 look at this, just right off the bat. Now, how am I able to get all these colors in there? How is that even possible? Well, folks, I'm gonna take a little detour here for a moment just to celebrate for the 1,000th time because people don't know enough about this ridiculously cool feature we have in Fresco called, drum roll please, the multicolor eyedropper. And it does exactly what you think it does. It samples a whole bunch of colors all at the same time. It could be anything. It could be just whatever area of your canvas you want to sample and load up your brush with. You can do that with the multicolor eyedropper. So all I have to do is use this little handy dandy touch modifier. Okay. That's my friend right here that I'm dragging around the screen. Okay. I just touch it with my thumb and I use my finger anywhere on the canvas while I'm doing this and I can just call up my multicolor eyedropper. Let's say I grab this little area right here. Now, if you look at my color swatch over on the left, um, where my tools are, okay, you're gonna see that, holy cow, it's selected all those colors at once. So now when I paint, bam, they're all in there, loaded onto that brush. And that sticks with you with whatever brush you use. So if I come over here to, for example, this um, Wave Runner brush and start painting, whoa, how cool is that? So you wanna talk about interesting backgrounds, folks. Just grab some multicolor swatch action load up a big brush and go to town. Don't worry, of course you can change the colors of these multicolor brushes 
And what's really cool is it'll retain all of the relationships between those colors, hue, saturation, and value. You just open up your color picker, and here you'll see I have the HSB sliders. See, I'm, I'm just collapsing that and expanding that. So I could change the color right here. That's the hue, right? How saturated is it? Brightness, etc. And then bang, same relationships, okay? Crazy. All right, you know we're gonna clear this mess away here. Let's say hi to some folks in the chat and then we'll jump right in to that first thing I wanted to talk to you all about, which was how to block stuff in and how to not get obsessed with detail using big, fat, juicy brushes, okay? So let's say hi. We have Alexander and Clever, hey folks, and Andreas and Tim. Oh, Christine is here. And I see Steve and Laura and Afroya. Hello, and Space Kitten, what a great name. Were you born Space Kitten? I think your parents are very cool. Sean Kozel, Ryan, nice to see you, nice to see you. And Sarah's here. And once again, General Kenobi is here, so no pressure. Uh, now, before changing color, clean and beat the devil out of the brush, says General Kenobi, which we know is a lovely tribute to our dear friend, Bob Ross, okay? And speaking of Bob Ross, uh, my um, former manager and good pal, Koi Vin at Adobe sent me the most adorable thing as a little gift. He sent me a Bob Ross mini Lego figure with a easel and some paints. Um, what a nice cat he is. So thanks for that, Koi. Um, and hel hello, Mel. Nice to see you. All right, gang. Let's get started. Now, clear this away. I'm just going to grab a solid color. And I'm going to work with a sort of a deeper dark color like this. Uh, first thing I'm going to do actually is tone my canvas. So I'm going to do that right now. Let's give a little tone. Okay, now here's what I like. Even if I'm just gonna fill in, block in, okay, something for a little composition, okay, I'm still gonna use a, a brush that maybe has some color variation to it. So I might use something like, let's see, um, why don't we jump out to our default fresco brushes for all of you guys using the uh, the free version, because of course there are so many, so many brushes you can use. All right, in this free version of fresco, and yes, fresco is totally free. You can go grab it today, go play around with it. You can create high resolution, 8K documents, unlimited layers. You get about 70 free brushes with it, including all the watercolors and oils, all the features. Um, you can live stream directly out of the app. That's crazy. Got uh, time lapses. I'm gonna go ahead and grab, um, how about this nice Cezanne brush, Cezanne. Okay, we'll size that baby up, make it really big. Okay, I think I'm gonna go like 900 pixels. And just ba -ba 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 -ba. look at that. It's a pretty big canvas, folks. No lag. And I'm just going to block that in. Now, here's the cool thing about the Cezanne brush, okay? It has a little bit of color variation in there. See that? Using color dynamics, okay? A slight little bit of color dynamics action. So even if I just block in a background like this before I start doing anything else, I like to have just a tiny bit of variety going on there. There's a little canvas texture, right? That's nice. So just throw a little mid-tone down. All right, now let's say I wanna have uh, maybe some some knight just sitting up on a horse and he's he's in the woods or something like that, okay? And I think, all right, so my, my knight's gonna be, you know, probably chilling right around here. And I'll just make my brush a little smaller. I'm still using big though. So like, there's my subject. I wanna have him kinda this way. Maybe he's like coming up over a little hill into some deep dark wood, or maybe he's emerging from the woods. I don't know, doesn't matter. Um, for now, I'm just gonna say, okay, there's that guy. And I think I'm gonna sort of frame him so everything around him is gonna be kind of dark here, get some trees and whatnot. Okay, so he's just coming up out of this way. All right, and maybe there's a big fat tree over here. Ba -ba -ba -ba. Okay, and I think off in the distance, you know, there's gonna be a little, little castle or something. So he's looking off at that castle. He's, he's here on his horse. All right, so a little horsey, kind of standing there. Maybe they're all tired. They've had like a really long day. Just got finished maybe slaying a dragon or something. I don't know. Okay, so we got some trees. See this? So I'm using a big, fat, chunky brush. And right now I'm just using this dark color here and it's responding to pen pressure, which is great. Okay, I want that. All right. And this is kind of like, all right, I've got some basic idea of where I'm going with this. Um, now, I can just sample another color right here and say, okay, that's gonna be like off in the distance. 
this is sitting up on a hill maybe that little castle just pop it a little higher up grab a little dark color right there now see you say oh that castle's too big and it's just a blob well here's what you do with the big brushes you carve so right i'm just going to carve i'm just going to cut this away you just go cut 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 oh my gosh now it's a smaller shape okay so there's a lot of carving in there and that's what i like because i can cut and carve right okay so go here a little lighter okay and start to like sort of refine some of what's going on here still not getting really busy with detail or anything just kind of cutting away some odds and ends maybe i say yeah there should be like a branch coming up here just to kind of interrupt all that action then i can cut some of that away so there's all this nice back and forth business going on right and it's too samey over here on the left i don't want on the right part of me. I don't want this tree to be like the same as that tree. I don't want that kind of weird symmetry thing going on. So what I do is I'm just gonna sort of refine a bit of this. See any details yet? Nope. Just shapes. Right? We're just working with shapes. Just shapes. And remember, this is all working with pen pressure, which is great. So like the lighter I go with my pressure, then I'm able to just sort of gloss over an area, glaze an area if I should if I so choose. Okay. And it's all just gonna be you know, it gets a little bit of little light in there. Gotta have a little bit of light in there. Can't all just be darks, right? Okie dokie. Yeah, so that's that's a nice shape right there. I like that shape. Um and over here, I think you know, just kinda just do this. Just come in and leave a little stumpy thing coming out right here. Maybe there's like a little kind of a tree that got zapped by lightning or something here. So it's just been sort of cut away right there. That's a nice little detail, right? All right, now size your brush down. Now size your brush down, start throwing in some some little bits, okay? Just just so we understand. Oh yeah, it's a tree. Okay, I got you. I got what you're doing there, Mr. Art person. All right? I see. I see what your plan is. Okay. Looks like you're making trees. Okay. I know what those shapes look like. I've seen those before. Da -da -da -da, da -da -da -da. Okay. So just that tiny bit of added detail there tells me okay i know what's going on here seen this movie before these shapes ring out to me and i say i know what they are and now i go a little smaller and do this look just bam just a little ear so i'm like oh there's the horse okay cool 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 and for the night maybe just like make it a little clearer that he's kind of hunched over on the horse yeah, just let that sort of go down into that, into those other shapes there. All right, see what's going on? All right, now, now, now we do this. We go even lighter, okay? Let's bring out some lights. Go big again. Just come around here and say, okay, up here, I'm gonna add more contrast. This is our area of focus, right? Our, our fellow right here, our knight. And we'll go small again and just pop a couple shapes in there. Just a, just a couple. Bum, 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 bum. And then just cut them away a little bit. All right, see how this is working? You see this little method now? This is how you do it. You're avoiding using big, fat, chunky brushes. You can avoid getting hung up on your details way too early in the process. Okay, so I think you know what I would do now is I'd start to really look at it and say, I don't want to move stuff around. I feel pretty good about how this is shaping up. Um, I like that I could feel now sort of this idea that there's a little path kind of wandering over this way. If I lighten, if I lighten this up just a touch here, okay, see that? Just lighten that up. Now we get the sense of like that path kind of heading down a little distant ways off into the, uh, the distance there. And that's heading away from me um, 
towards our destination, which is this, this castle on a hill. Okay. Now you want to add some interest to that silhouette of the castle. You, that's, you could just size your brush down. All right, and we get up here and just add a bit of some shapes there. So we're like, okay, okay, okay. Just a little bit of asymmetrical balance and make that a little smaller. Maybe you can have a little tower right there, okay? And another little tower right there. And then I come in and again, look, just carve those, just carve them away. Carve, carve, carve. And that kind of carving too, what's cool is it's going to have a bit of a soft edge to it, right? I can always size that brush up and just lightly pass over that so it's not too dark, right? We want that to be in the distance. It's gotta be in the distance. So we push it back by creating less contrast, right? Just lighten that up a little bit. Okie dokie. Now, so there you go. I'm using big brushes, big brushes, okay? Not a lot of detail here, not a lot of detail, but there's enough to suggest the beginning of something. All right, any questions so far of what I'm doing? Let's see what it says here. Um, bah, 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 bah. Has Kyle created vector brushes? Only pixel for now, Laura, but more vector brushes are coming to Fresco and I will be on top of that, don't worry. Um, Thomas, you're getting flashbacks to the Hansel and Gretel composition. Hey, this is kind of similar, isn't it? Very similar. Uh, were, were you using the brush to erase rather than the eraser? No, I wasn't, Christine. But to do that, very simple, you just hold down the touch modifier. Any brush in your hand that you're using, you hold that touch modifier down and you instantly start erasing with it. Isn't that handy? Um, all right, so. What else, what else, what else? Maybe on Fresco, it's that dot thing. Yeah, Steve, that, that, this, this, this little fellow right here does all kinds of things. Your touch modifier keeps you from having to go to the toolbar on the left too often. Um, you can simply use it for, uh, well, first of all, the multicolor eyedropper, which I showed you earlier. But yeah, if you're using a brush, just hold it down and start erasing. Simple as that, simple as that. When I say carve, what I mean is I am grabbing a lighter color or a darker color and painting in here. So here, if I wanna carve around this night character. I touch the screen right here and I select a lighter color from my canvas. And then I just start painting out around him that lighter color until I start to get what I want, right? So, you know, I could start adding some, some ideas about maybe he's got some folds in his little cape or something hanging down. You know, I'm not gonna get into those details though. Right, I'm only looking at big shapes right now. Big, big, big fat shapes. Okay, so that's uh, that's one little thing you could do. And then, you know, if I really want to have some fun, I know it's too early for this, but, you know, put some weird bat creatures here. Maybe there's like some giant scary bats that live out here. I don't know where we are. I don't know where we are. Okay, some more of them just kind of chilling out around the castle. Okay. See what I mean? Start, get your imagination going um, without getting too specific. I don't have to be specific, right? That's not the point of what we're doing right now. What we're doing now is we're just setting things up. And that is one of the first things I wanna to talk to you about with the big brushes is how wonderful it is to just set stuff up, get yourself ready to start moving into a bigger painting and into something um, with more detail and all that. But before you get into all that kind of refinement, you just wanna play around with the bigger, the bigger brushes. Now you might think, okay, well, does this only apply to landscape and whatnot? No, 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 no. What if you're doing a head study or something? Let's grab another big fat brush. Um, let's go to the dry media and maybe grab the uh, the graphite, okay? And, and let's let's size it up, let's size it up, okay? It's gonna be 200 pixels. Now I just use black, all right? Black on white, there it is, da -da -da -da. Big brush, okay? So you wanna sculpt out a head, you know, you just kinda, like I can't do any details here. I can just sort of rough out shape of a head, right? Yeah, maybe it's gonna have like some cool hair coming out, out this way, doing its thing, whatever. I haven't yet figured that out, I don't know. I don't know what's going on with this character yet. I'm just sort of, this is what's great. This is what's good about these big brushes, okay? You just can't get too crazy specific, can you, right? So some kind of weird coat thing here. Alrighty, slide that on over this way. Make it a little bigger. 
Okay, so now I say, all right, uh, what do I want to do? I want to I put a little eye socket right there. So there's an eye there. There's another eye over there. Got a shadow under the nose and all that. And shadow under the cheek. Okay. Shadow under the... Got a top lighting situation here. Shadow under the jaw. Okay. See, I'm just I'm just painting with black, but I'm, it's pressure sensitive. So the darks, the darks can be as dark as I want, depending on how much pressure I use. Okay, and, and just right now, I, I almost feel like, oh, cool, I kind of want this person to have bangs, you know? I just feel like that's a cool thing, so I want to do that. And then I want to do something crazy. I still want to do something cool with the hair out here. I don't know yet what's going on there. So it's just shapes. Okay, but I know I want that to happen. I know I want all that business right there. And I want this to be really dark. I just want to knock it in. It's just going to be a black, black shape. Okay, it's not important right now. Maybe that like carries up. Maybe there's like some kind of hood or something. I don't know. I don't know yet. Maybe there's a hood covering, covering this person. They've got bangs. And then on this side, that hood is like popping out. I don't know. I don't know. I just don't. All right, put a little gray back here. We don't know anything about this yet. We're just this is this is what I'm talking about. It's like you're sort of playing with clay. You know, you ever just take a lump of clay and start just pushing it around in your fingers, and you're like, "What's gonna happen?" I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. But eventually, you start to see something, and you go, "Oh." That's what's going to happen. And then you have an idea and you sort of like your idea. So then you take your idea that you kind of like, you start fiddling with that a little bit more. But you don't go crazy with details and all that yet because you still don't know if you like it that much, right? You don't know where this is going. I don't know where this is going. I know that kind of looks like a face. Okay. So I know I'm, I'm doing a figure. That was the idea. I said I was going to do a figure. I went into it saying, I'm going to do a figure. Uh, and that's kind of all we got right now. So, so who knows? See, I start just car carving. This is what I mean by carving. Just cutting stuff away. I want that silhouette to be kind of interesting. You know, I don't know. Maybe it's a Jedi. That's always an easy thing to fall back on. You know, draw a Jedi. How lazy of me to draw a Jedi. Such a crowd pleaser, right? You just... When in doubt, draw a Jedi. So we've got the hood there. Now, maybe I could grab some white and have a lightsaber coming out, something like that. Okay, and then that, that like lights the face over here. Let me say, look, the face is getting lit. Mm-hmm. Lighting up that face. Bzzz. See? That's what I'm saying. You, Where did this start? It was just kind of construction, right? Just doing a little head construction. Um, and now maybe we have beginnings of some cool Jedi character. You know, I don't know. I don't know. You get the idea though, right folks? I hope this is making sense. Why would you use big brushes? Because it saves you from getting into the weeds, from getting into all those nasty little details that don't matter at this stage, right? We're just painting. We're just trying to get something up on there that looks, um, well, that looks kind of like the beginnings of something that we want to take farther. That's the main thing, right? You don't wanna go nuts with something that ultimately you just realize, isn't that exciting for you? It's not, it's not really doing it for you. You're like, eh, you know what? I was kind of excited about that idea. Uh, but then it just kind of fell apart. Not, not excited anymore. Okay. Hey, you know what? Grab the smudge tool see what happens start start smudging around start make some edges a little softer 
right? The smudge tool is a brush, right, folks? Don't forget, that is included in our arsenal of brushes, smudge tool. Definitely something you want to use from time to time. Okay, and you can really size that baby up too. You can go big with that smudge tool. Go big. Okay. And then squint down at your image. Just squint and say, yeah, my how's the values looking? Is this looking okay? Is this kind of doing what I want? And if not, adjust accordingly. Right? At least you're not at a stage where you've got all this messy detail that would just prevent you from wanting to take the image any farther. When you work loose like this with big brushes, okay, you just sort of take the pressure off. Um, you can change your mind. You can go in different directions, okay? That's the key. That's the key, and that's the beauty of it. That's the beauty of it. You are not stuck in one place the whole time. Okay? All right, so that is the first thing about big brushes that is so nice, and it really is a great way to work. I encourage all of you to try this and see how it goes for you. Okay, uh, let's see. Um, any questions about this? I see a lot of questions about Behance. Yep, portfolio stuff, that's cool. Uh, and yes, every Friday I do a master class. I'm continuing my editorial illustration master class this Friday, so tune in for that, folks. Okay, now we're moving on. We're moving on to brushes, and we're talking about brushes for backgrounds. Now, of course, here it's sky's the limit, okay? Um, but why don't we just for because we're in fresco, okay? And I'm gonna have a little sip of my rasa. Now my brain is just firing on all cylinders. Um, we're going to jump over to our live media category, live brushes. What are live brushes, you say? If you haven't used these before, they are watercolors and oils that stay wet. Don't believe me? Oh boy, you're in for a treat. Check this out. Let's grab a nice bright color, size our brush up nice and fat, and let's just put some color down. Ba -ba 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 -ba. Can you see that just moving around? Let me zoom in so you can see that paint just flow. Ah, look at that. It's just flowing into the space where I paint. Unbelievable. Grab another color and let's blend those together. Here we go. Push that yellow into the red. Ooh, look at that. Just like the real thing. Water color. Isn't that fun? Mmm. Never gets old for me, I can tell you that. Um, you would think after two years of working with these, I, it would be old hat and I'd say, eh, what's the big deal? But no, does not get old. So right off the bat, you can say to yourself, oh, well, I've always wanted to use watercolor for my backgrounds, but I'm scared. Um, well, not anymore, because now you have undo. <laughs> so you can use watercolor with undo. You can just grab color from your canvas. You can paint on top of stuff. Okay. I, I've got my brush, by the way, at 500 pixels. 500 pixels. Do you see any delay here? Let's push that water and flow all the way up to the top. There is none. Do -da -do -do. Woo! Just push that like that. Zoom and watch it move. Nice little texture in there too. It's ever so subtle. Okay, so yes, speaking of backgrounds, why not give yourself a nice little watercolor background? Okay, use some big brushes to do it. Set something up like this. Uh, maybe grab a really dark color or you know, hey, check this out. Why not use the multicolor eyedropper? You can do that. The watercolor, see this? I'll use some red and yellow all in one stroke. I'll hide this for a moment. Look what happens when I paint with it. See that? <gasps> How pretty is that? Several colors loaded on the brush all at once. Oh, that is fun. That is fun. Go right through there. Um, but yeah, so let's return back here. Got your background. Take this, just bring the brightness way down. Maybe use like a really dark color and go for something a little warmer. And just uh, pass right through here. See how that goes. Mm hmm. Ooh. Ooh, I like it. Okay, now start making some shapes. 
okay and then I can respond to what I see and I can say okay make this lighter here go lighter here and there we go excellent all right now from this point this is where I could do several things now I could continue using the watercolor as is while the layer is still wet but here's what I love I can actually choose to dry a layer okay might switch over to a nice watercolor soft wash brush go crazy with that over here in this corner it's putting down some random stuff see those little edges that you get like a um, watercolorist call those like blooms little blooms in there that's super fun I just paint around like this and now I'm gonna dry that layer just dry it dry that layer and we can pick up some spatter and if you want to do this you can paint with pure water so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna tap the little transparent circle at the bottom right corner of the color wheel and what that's telling me is I'm going to now be using spatter with just pure water and since I just kind of dried it well it's kind of dry but it's also like semi dry I guess how, how I'd put it because look at that when I spatter like this okay look at what that does it basically takes that semi dry paint and pushes it away from the water that gets dropped onto it now I know you've seen this if you've ever used real watercolor Right, you just sprinkle a little water on top of the paint as it's drying. Get these beautiful effects. So if you're looking for like a digital way to try and be Bill Sienkiewicz, okay, or um, or maybe Dave Mack or somebody who takes advantage of what watercolor can do with all of its textures and its natural uh, fun unpredictability, um, here's something that you could do. You could do the spatter with the water. All right, and check this out. Since we're in a digital environment, I could add another layer, right? And I could grab more color. Okay, we go back to our original. I could just put some, some cool little shapes down. Okay, and whatever I do now, remember, okay, whatever I do, I'm on a separate layer. Okay, so it's not gonna interact with what's beneath it, right? Nothing's gonna interact down there. But I can now merge that layer down, okay? Take that same brush and just load it up with pure water. Okay, now, now what's gonna happen? Well, look, <gasps> I can start blending that into that original background. It's all gonna start pushing into what's already there. See that craziness right there? Woo, 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 woo. Look at that. That's crazy, okay? So maybe you're trying to do some kind of interesting skyscape or some just really abstract spacey background, right? You want to take something like this. Let's add a bit more spatter and uh, just throw some spatter on there. Remember, I'm just using water. If I want to use color, I can do that too. Just do that with spatter. So now this, this background looks crazy, right? Tons of texture, tons of uh, cool stuff going on. Um, and what I could do now is I could, if I say, all right, I want this to be like some weird spacey starscape or something, okay? So I'm going to just add a new layer and I'm going to grab a darker color, a bluish kind of a purpley kind of color, right? Fill that layer and then I'm gonna take that mode and we're gonna go down to overlay, okay? Or maybe we go down to, um, Let's try something crazy. Let's do divide or hue. Ooh, I like hue. Do saturation. Do, do color. Right? Just keep playing around with these until you find something interesting. Well, that's interesting. Uh, let's go over to color burn. That's crazy. Okay, I like that. And add a darker color, lighten. I'm just I'm just scrolling through these crazy modes here, folks. Let's do hard light, see what that does. Pump that up. That's getting spacey, I like that. Hmm, that's pretty cool. All right, I'm going to now take that original layer, duplicate it, and then set it to a different mode. Let's try um, overlay. 
that's going to intensify those darks and lights. You could also do vivid light. There we go. Okay, and now I'm going to go for a different hue. So we'll come here, we'll reduce the opacity here. And I'm going to take hue for a new a new layer, setting the color mode to hue. And I've got that, that dark uh, color, okay? And this is what I want to tint everything. So I'm going to use the watercolor again. Let's use that wash flat brush. See this? And I can just paint over it. that and then make it a little more like sort of a pinkish purple color in some areas and then grab that watercolor soft wash brush go to town with that a little bit come back grab that original darker color I was playing with and make that even more blue, even more blue. Have a little streak of blue coming in through this direction here. And then over here too, just like that. Just connect those two little bits. And now I've got this ridiculously weird, cool background that I could play with for some starry spacescape thing. So I could go back to my Photoshop brushes, go to the effects, Okay, maybe use some scattered clouds, right? I'm gonna bump that up, make my brush really big, like 1500 pixels, and just start painting on top. See what that does. Mm hmm. And grab a lighter color as well. Nice. Come in here and use, these are all big brushes, right? That's the, that's the name of the game today, big brushes. Now I'm gonna go super dark, okay? A couple of spots here. What brush am I using? This is the ink spread brush. It's in the effects category. Look at that. I don't know what's going on here. It's like some, just a cool starry spacescape. The only thing it's missing now, okay, is a bunch of spaceships coming in for their space battle. Look, I could change the brush mode too. Let's let's make the blend mode into something like soft light or overlay. Let's try a soft light. And ooh, look at that. Just crazy. So up here in this left corner, we've got some, some light coming, right? That's going a little nuts. That's going nuts right there. That's going looking crazy right there. Have I used any small brushes? No, that's not what I'm here for. I'm trying to set myself up with a cool spacey background. Now, now if I want to, I could start designing around this and I can say, okay, cool. Now I could grab, you know, I'm on a new layer, just want to work in a non-destructive way, right? But I want to grab a painting brush now. Let's say we grab the block stain brush. Block stain's a nice one. And I say, okay, I'm ready to indicate over here that we've got some cool planetary surface. I don't know. And uh, we've got our little uh, moon moon base right here. We just watched The Martian finally. Wow, it's a good movie. Very good. If you haven't seen it, check it out. So here's Moon Base Alpha Beta Zippy Doodah. Okay, and uh, I'm gonna smudge some of that. Just so it's not too sharp. Okay. Okay, and there's our. There's one little thing there. And maybe you're gonna have some folks working on that moon base. 
while meanwhile up here in the stars uh, here check this out you know just grab my selection tool and let's stick a moon right here grab a big brush and we're going to talk about special effects so let's go to that effects again and you know this combining with what we're doing with our background go to the spatter mixed brush we're going to go dark to light so dark at the bottom okay and then light at the top so i'm going to start dark let's go for blue on this one starting down here so we got some dark And then up at the top, we're gonna move lighter. Make that brush huge. I'm gonna make it like, uh, let's go like a thousand pixels. Just do this. And then remember how we talked about erasing? Hold down that touch modifier. Just tap a few spots here and there. You can erase that. Uh, maybe I want it to have some sort of cratery things going on. So grab that ink stain brush. Go a little darker. Just kind of crater some of that. And uh, the sponge brush is very good for that, by the way. Sponge brush. Or set that to multiply. So whatever I do now, it's going to make it darker. Multiply. Very nice. No more texture with this planet or this moon or whatever that's hanging out back there. We deselect. Look at that. See what I mean? Big brushes to the rescue. Maria, I am using an iPad Pro with Adobe Fresco. It is free. Go grab it. Works on a lot of Windows devices, works on iPad, and it works on newer iPhones. Uh, let's see, any questions? Yes, I'm calling out the brushes as we go, Laura, and anybody else who's curious, um, so watch the replay uh, for the brush names. I try and call them out as I go. Try and call them out. Uh, da, 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 da. Okay. But you see what I mean? You see how quickly we're going through this and we're creating crazy stuff? And the secret is that we are using big brushes we're using big brushes so that is helping us to get things set up in a way where we're just not obsessing over detail that comes later okay but special effects they're good for that obviously for blocking stuff in good for exciting backgrounds okay um just so much so much you can do so why don't we select multiple here i'm going to just grab all of this action and uh Put that in a little folder so I don't have to worry about it. Hide that. Get rid of this character. We don't need that anymore. Um, Okie dokie. Now, I talked about adding to existing artwork. So let's jump back for a moment here to my home screen. And let's go ahead and take this little... This is something I was playing with um, earlier. Say big brushes. See, I'd not, I was doing that carving thing I told you about. A little bit of smudging here and there. Um, didn't get that far with this, but got far enough to have an idea for what, what this is, okay? But what I wanted to show you was stuff you could do with big brushes just to add like a final element of texture or whatever. So let's say this was done, okay? It's not, but let's just pretend that it is. And I say to myself, hey, I'd really like to just add some, I don't know, some cool texture on top of this that's really more about brush strokes, um, and I want those to kind of come through. So what could you do? Well, let's go ahead and check out some options. Now we have this other Cezanne brush, which is in your painting category. If I make it big, okay, we're talking like 386 pixels here. Let me get even bigger. Let's make it 434 pixels. It's enormous. Now I'm not gonna use a lot of color here. Okay, I'm just gonna use like a mid-tone. And I'm just gonna, look, I'm just on a, I'm on a separate layer, okay? I'm just gonna paint with this. Let's grab a slightly brighter color. Yeah, 
You know what I just realized? I'm in I'm in an internal build here. I think this I think this build is not recognizing color dynamics, and I need it to. But folks, in the interest of time, here's what I'm going to do. This is not the App Store build. I'm working with an internal one because we got secret stuff going on over here, and I'm testing some secret stuff. But in order to make it use, normally this brush would throw all kinds of different colors at you. So I'm going to fake it by using our good friend, the multicolor eyedropper. So I just grab some similar hues here. Multicolor eyedropper to the rescue. Grab those together. Get a little bigger. You can always tap and hold and actually enter a number. So you can say, yeah, I think I want 700 pixels. Oh, there, see? So now I'm getting some color variety in there. And it's also very textured. Okay, These, because of the way this brush is shaped, the stamp of the brush and everything else. Okay, it's very, it's got a lot of texture to it. So we're just gonna go crazy here, painting in different directions, making a big mess. All right, there's two things I'm gonna do. One, I'm gonna have this color here and I'm gonna move it from warm to cool. And I'm gonna have the warm at the top. So I take my hue and saturation and brightness sliders we're gonna move a little warmer. Okay, take the saturation down. And actually I'm gonna warm it up more towards reds. And I'm gonna do this. Just put some, some red up here. Probably hear that tapping sound of my Apple Pencil there. It's just me tapping away. Okay, and I'm going to sample kind of right around the middle here and just kind of throw some of that in there. So that transition isn't so harsh, right? Sample both colors together. Sort of soften that up a bit. See what I mean? All right, so I just want to do that. And then I'm going to come over here and let's play with our, our layer blending modes. And I'm going to start with soft light. Okay, now what that does, if you look at it, is not only does it just throw that interesting color over everything, but you see those little bits that get broken up with the texture of that brush? This is just a really cool thing you can do to add effects to your illustration at the end. So what, well, let me show you what this uh, looks like without. So check it out. Here is without, here is with. Now, isn't that interesting? You created a completely different mood as well as a cool texture on top of the illustration just using that brush in a couple of minutes. And this is what I'm talking about. Now, of course, you can get as fancy and crazy as you want with this kind of thing. And you can use it with different blending modes. You can use it in a way that feels like it's going to work for your illustration. Maybe there's a texture you need to add to some area that just feels a little flat and you say, oh, what can I do? What can I do? I don't want to sit there and spend the next hour painting in on that area. Well, take advantage of a large brush that has a textural quality to it with some color dynamics. So when I say color dynamics, I mean the hue, the saturation, and the brightness vary slightly with every um, instance of that brush stamp as you're painting. And if you want more information on color dynamics, Go to YouTube, search Kyle Webster Color Dynamics. You'll get a nice little bit of information about uh, how that all works. Put up some videos there for you. Um, I think there are more than one actually. But isn't that an interesting thing to do? Look at all that color you've added. Okay, you've tinted it basically. The original colors are still coming through, but they're tinted now. And you've really changed the quality of this just with that one pass. Okay, now that you've got it in this mode though, okay, I've got the blending mode set to soft light. Well, you know, what, what happens if I just play around? Overlays, so super intense. Look how intense that is, all right? I'd say that's so intense, it's 80s intense. I'm talking 1980s, in your face, you know, turn the volume up to 11, really crazy fantasy um, intensity there. And, uh, I like that stuff. Why not? That could just be the quality, the flavor of this illustration. Um, and you know, like I said, it's not finished, but it's kind of cool to see where it could go, you know, 
This could be some book cover thing or whatever. Um, but you're seeing now the intensity of that pattern we created with that brush, okay? Um, other special effects. Well, here, let's see if I can just uh, head on back for a moment to my work and see if I can find my surfer illustration from a little while ago. Great example of using really big brushes to create almost an entire illustration that then just requires a tiny element of detail to pull it all together. Let's see. Isn't it great that all my work is in the cloud, folks? Cloud documents for the win right here, folks. All this stuff, this is stuff, look, my kids' drawings are in here. Um, but anything I need that I've done in the last, you know, forever is right here when I need it. I could go log into somebody else's machine and my work's just gonna be there. I don't have to worry about it. Don't lose it. The device gets stolen or breaks. You know, that would be sad, but I'd be fine because my work would be saved. Oh gosh, see? Now we're, we're heading back here. This is like back in March, 2020. Here it is, found it, found it. So it's pulling it down from the cloud. And this is gonna be a great example of an illustration that was created 99% of it with big fat brush. See that? That background, sky in the background, all with one big spatter brush. And that's in that summer 2020 brush update if you wanna try it, one of my favorite brushes. And it is the, uh, or spring 2020, I think. Let's see here. But there it is, splish splash, splish splash. Okay, and there are two, there are three of them in there, three variants of that same brush. Spring 2020 update. Um, and you can see that all I had to do in the end was I just made a little selection, okay, with my lasso tool. I selected the shape of our friend here, the surfer guy, okay, see him? And I just selected and I painted inside the selection with that same big brush because I was using a selection, didn't care. It was still gonna stay in the borders. This entire illustration was made with one brush and some selections, okay? So just to get your mind going and, and start thinking about ways you could use these, I thought this would be a good example. In fact, we could even, since we have a couple minutes left, I thought, why don't we try and recreate something like this, huh? Let's go back home and why don't we just go current screen size. Why don't we just snag that brush and see what we can make with it, okay? So we'll come over here, go to our spring 2020 update, ba bow And there are those splish splash brushes. And I think for the sky, you know, I just started coming in, doing this. Okay. Just added a bit of variation. Like that. Go ahead and do a little multicolor swatch action if you want. Why not? All right, see what that does? That's crazy. You could even do like a marbled sort of appearance with that if you wanted to. That'd be super cool. Size my brush up. Let's go 750. And just do all this. So that's kind of like how I'd throw that sky together, I guess. Um, and we got the normal splish splash. Let's see what that does. I don't know. First, just play around with it and see what it does. Cool. Throw that water in there. Do this. What's the second splish splash do? Oh, I see. That's got a wet edge to it. That's interesting. Nice. It's scary when I can't remember my own brushes, gang. I make so many brushes. Should I make fewer brushes? Don't they just get out of the brush game? Can't remember the 1800 brushes I've made. 
Um, as I look at this though, I'm thinking maybe in summer 2020, I added a splish splash brush, a splashy splishy kind of brush that looks a little more similar to what, I think it was the Spladoosh. That's it. Spladoosh is what I'm looking for. This is in that summer 2020. Yep, this is the one folks. That's, yep, mm-hmm. See, can't even keep track of my own brushes. All right, now we go big. Size that baby up. Let's do like 1400 pixels. Dangerous. Go a little darker, come in from this side. Splishy splash that up. There we go. And we need to get some of that lighter surf color. So we size it down again. Just come over here and just kind of surf that up. So now I'm actually starting to pay attention to shape. You know, at first, and by the way, these are still, these are still enormous. I'm still working huge, but I'm a little bit more conscious of like designing something on the page, right? Deeper. There we go. See what I mean? And then we just throw it together and we put the rest of that where it needs to go. Throw in that surfer guy. And all I had to do there was just make a selection. There's the surfboard, right? There's the guy. Ah, he's surfing. And then I just paint inside that. You get the idea. So, so much fun. Um, Big brushes, what can I say? They're the best. Uh, anyway, thanks for joining me. Hope you had fun. I had fun making this stuff as I, go, I always do. And as you know, I could talk, to, talk about brushes all day long. So I'll see you tomorrow for my draw along class at 5.30 p.m. Eastern. And uh, that also is on Thursday, but this week not happening because of some other stuff going on. But Friday, Friday, I'll be back for my master class. Please join me for them. Everybody take care of yourselves. Take care of each other. Please be kind to one another. And for now, I'll say ciao, but I do look forward to seeing you soon.